For June the 26th, 2015, for June the 26th, 2015, we talk about D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die, E3 highlights, and we ask you where consoles fit into your life. Welcome to the 109th level. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jella Prendes. I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Sorry we missed last week. I was not feeling well. And what a week to miss. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> not much happened, right guys? I was gone. I was I was kind of out of commission. <laughs> Tell me we not just much didn't want to cover that much stuff. Yeah. Well, t- technically, it all happened right before that week. So, mm. did it? I E3? mean, yeah. Well, it, it was that week. Like last week was the week of E three. Oh, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were like all the press conferences were were ready. We were going to sit down, talk about all those, and we're still going to hit the highlights at the very least. But yeah, so that was that was an opportunity. For that, I apologize. But to be, to, apologize to, to be fair, I was going to miss last week anyway, too. So. <laughs> True. We'd like to have you here. Jala, thank you for, uh, for, for filling in at the last minute for, uh, for David. No problem. No tropical storm this time, so I'm good to go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Mm. Cool. Well, we have a long show ahead of us, so I'm going to cut this uh, beginning section short, but I'm going to um, confirm for everybody who's listening that, you know, most as well. <laughs> this is usually where we catch up and all that. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we've got um, kind of a, a modified version of the show. We have a brief where we're going to dwell a little bit on some of the highlights from E3 after all the dust is settled. Uh, we have a multiplayer uh, question that Dennis has put out about uh, about consoles and um, about how vague is that? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we're going to do a little bit of uh, the, the, the grind time pending. So yeah, let us get started with... The brief. the brief, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games. And boy, oh boy, is there a lot that has been happening, you know, since E3 and whatnot. Um, yeah, so I have this broken up. I've done my usual note-taking thing, and um, I've broken this up by the different conferences. And I'm going to make sure we don't spend too terrible much time on this, but uh, let's kind of hit the highlights from each and every one of these. So I'm just going to do some free word association, guys. Bethesda, what do you think? Dishonored. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> not all at not all at once. Um, yeah, Ben, how about that? Fallout Shelter, you've been playing it. Uh, so I do not have an iOS, but uh, one of the people I visited last week did, so I got to play for like maybe an hour. Mm. And boy, howdy, is that addicting! So mm. it's, it's like, pretty cool. It's like Tiny Tower, but the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's tiny, it's good it's tiny bunker yeah i like it a lot like it's it's in it's in the style that i really enjoy um i i haven't played enough of it to kind of like warrant a what you've been playing about it or yeah. grind about it ra- rather but yeah that was like a really big surprise as as a brief brief they're going to make it for the android in a couple of months but wow. for now it for, is ios only yeah well you know just re- relish that time that they have given you <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> not not constantly fidgeting with your phone uh there was a reason i had to take tiny tower off my phone <laughs> um jolly you said dishonored right yeah dishonored too yeah that's my big one um you you get to play as emily um and corvo uh but uh yeah it looks really cool now is yeah. emily the little girl from the first one yes yes yeah. uh, okay so this is this is a sequel and i really don't know much more about it other than that no, but you, I'm excited about it. <laughs> do you want to know much more of it besides that? Not really. Like, this is one of those ones where I like Dishonored enough that I don't want to be uh, spoiled ahead of time. Mm-hmm. I mean, did, did you did you have more details? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tend to be one of those people who I like the things that are out and playable or about to be released so I can get excited because it's about to be released and I'll remember... <laughs> very shortly i should be playing a game now yeah. but you know but i'm actually legitimately excited about that because dishonored was the last triple a game that i actually went all the way through pretty quickly mm. for me um yeah so i forget did you enjoy dishonored yeah oh okay that's finally what, like, i have somebody I, if, on my if, side if, <laughs> no, no, no 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 if i 
if I do not like a AAA game or any game at all, I just stop playing it. Yeah. Or, you know, even if I like it, unless it really grips me, I, I will just get distracted by something else and play something else. So the fact that I actually went through the entire game and all of the DLC is magic. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that doesn't happen very frequently. Because, you know, you've heard me talk about, oh, I played Thief, I played you know, uh, Devil May Cry, I played Doom Raider for a little bit of time, and then mm-hmm. I just went, Pfft. and yeah. it's not that they're bad games, I just, I I did not stick to them, because, yeah. it, you know, they didn't uh, call to a certain uh, part of my soul or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we have a similar I'm, pattern. Yeah. So, anyway, sorry. Nice. Yeah, and my story from this, uh, Fallout has a release date, like we knew that Fallout 4 was a thing um, a while back, but uh, I had no idea it was coming out as soon as it is, November yeah. 10th. So I know that, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, that's going to get in the way of some stuff that's happening this winter. Vis a vis the network that I will not get into any more details for. <laughs> uh, so, yep. so cool. Have you seen the $120 Pip-Boy edition of Fallout 4 yet? I have. Oh my. <laughs> I have. I don't know if I want it. Okay. Really? Yeah. I, I just, I, I just don't know if I want it. <laughs> just Maybe. because you don't think he'll use it. Well, yeah, it's just it's just one of the, like I basically I bought the uh, the the crazy edition of Dark Souls two that has the statuette and like that's on a shelf now and I I kind of am angry that I have to now lug it around, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, like buying a physical copy of a game that's fine. I have a big shelf on which games can go. It's cool, but uh, something that has a bunch of that, I I don't know. It's weird. It's it's cool that it exists. This may be jumping ahead, but I bought the special edition of Batman that came with Christian Bale. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows up at your door. Yeah, like, just hangs out for a little bit. Yeah, he's, yeah. eats your food, doesn't flush the toilet. He, he sits next to you and criticizes your play. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to pay extra for him to use the American accent? <laughs> <laughs> how about uh microsoft's i know that we are not uh generally microsoft uh followers here but then any, did anything stick out to you guys if they can give beyond eyes a centerpiece and they're okay by me so that was great sherita got up there and, and uh, uh presented yeah I, I haven't gotten around to watching the video yet but i'm very excited that, that, that she is getting the level of uh support that that game deserves yeah so I can only assume that she's getting some money from that, you know, like to some kind of co-publishing deal. It's going to PC and Xbox One. But uh, yeah, the demo looked fantastic. Mm-hmm. Now, do you know what this is? This is a question that might have been answered in the in the uh, demo. But when they say PC, do they mean specifically PC and we'll figure out Mac later? Or is PC just broad parlance for <laughs> on computers with keyboards? Yes, the <laughs> the latter. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, let's see here. The big one for me, like there wasn't an awful lot of like system specific things, like no hardware announcements, no modifications other than Microsoft coming out and saying, yeah, your three sixties or sorry, your Xbox ones are backward compatible with three sixty games now. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which that's yeah. good. Yeah. It is a good thing. It's very strange and out of left field and they're calling it native, uh, <laughs> native code or like you know, native running, but uh, I don't know how that works. If it was possible, why didn't they use that as a starting point? Especially because yeah. that is a, a selling point very early on in a console's life cycle. Yeah, yeah. And I remember last year, everyone vehemently saying that we cannot run uh, last generation's games. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. it's kind of kind of weird to hear them doing an about face on that. If mm-hmm. you know, they yeah. kind of says doubling either, back. Either and... they, yeah, exactly. Like they. So, which time were you lying to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, Sony has a better case for that because you know they went from crazy cell architecture to uh, x86. But um, like even Microsoft, like the 360 was Power PC, and they're going to x86 as well. I guess that's easier to emulate, but that's not running it natively. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird to me. But I mean, all games are uh, remakes or reboots or or remasters of some sort now. So it's basically already happening. All the games are made for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love I love that, that that passes for news. This three year old indie game is now coming out on on yeah. consoles. <laughs> cool, I guess. <sighs> Anything else stick out to you guys? No, no. Dark Souls three got a trailer that didn't really reveal that much continuing the story of the giants they said that this is going to be the last dark souls game Mm. Mm. which is probably a healthy thing if i'm honest about that yeah 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 i want them to move on to something else that's inspired by it like if they continue with bloodborne that's a-okay with me 
or maybe they'll just go back to Dark Souls. It's a hard reboot for the series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there is some other stuff. Uh, how about EA? Anything stick out for 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 you there? Uh, so I haven't heard anything about Mass Effect Andromeda, so perhaps you can fill me in on that. There's nothing to fill in. Like, they're okay. talking about going to a new galaxy. <laughs> the trailer is super weird. It uses, a, like, a Johnny Cash song, and it shows a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different um, like, landscapes of alien planets and stuff, but nothing about gameplay, nothing about timeline. Um, it's very strange. Yeah, like, what characters are in the game, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, would you? So, would you want them to kind of hew closely to the previous games, or would you want them to like break as far as possible while still being in the same universe? It, it's kind of like the X Men movies, like with X Men Three, where it's like they kind of wrote themselves into a corner. So, I don't know where they would go if they kept with the same storyline. Yeah, I feel like, but that assumes that assumes a continuous timeline, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, that, that that they don't branch it or that they, it doesn't take place in between one of the one you know one of the sequels you know it's it's like lion king one and a half <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey wasn't that the rosencrantz and guildenstern are dead version of lion king timba are dead yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> Timon and Pumbaa. Are Timon and Pumbaa. Wait. Yep. Pomon and Tumba. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pomon and... <laughs> Got it right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I was pretty excited about Unravel. That looks like a pretty cool little puzzle platformer where you're playing as a cute, uh, a cute yarn monster that leaves a like a like a line of red yarn behind him that you use to uh, grapple and swing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I keep on hearing the platformer is dead, and I I just don't think that we've seen that yet. Like, it keeps no. on coming back in all these different interesting ways. It's decidedly an indie thing to be shown yeah. at the EA conference, and there's a bunch of stuff we're not talking about. The general consensus is that EA kind of dumb fucked up. Um, with Unravel? Or no, no, just in general with their conference. The The only conference that I actually watched was, was Sony, and that was with, you know, Dennis and, and David. It was with you guys. Um, so I didn't I didn't see it. And generally, it was like all this list is just pulled from the stuff I think we care about. Like mm-hmm. I didn't put Madden or whatever on there. But the consensus is that like, you know, Mass Effect Unravel and Mirror's Edge were the, the highlights of that. Hmm. And speaking mm-hmm. of Mirror's well, Edge, Mirror's Edge is still a thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I was I was excited by that just because Mirror's Edge is a game that deserves a sequel. And it looks like it's getting it uh, in, a, in the best way possible. Um, the big thing, really, that that you know about, you need to know about, is that they said they're not even going to mess with gun combat at all, which is great because it was the worst part of the uh, of the first game. Uh, and so, for them to really focus on the the fortes is uh, is, is good news. Yeah. So I got a question about this: Are they do they know if they're going to implement the Oculus Rift with this or not? Oh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> haven't haven't seen any details like that. That would be interesting to say the One least. Way ticket Ooh, to vomit that would be city. neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Mirror's Edge, a medic edition. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it's supposed to be open world. Okay. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Mirror's Edge catalyst for throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's a it's a, it's a reboot, right? Like this is t- taking the Tomb Raider 2013 tack of yeah. we're going to show you the origins of Faith. Mm-hmm. yeah which is fine that's fine it's been long enough and people who are hearing about it, mirror's edge now probably didn't hear about the first one because it didn't sell that well yeah <laughs> oh well sony sony they they blew the doors off i think oh my gosh yeah ben yeah <laughs> ben you see that last guardian uh i'll believe it i'll believe it when i have it in my hands <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh he's so jaded <laughs> it's, it's been 10 years he's not the only one okay there's plenty of people out there with the same sentiments yeah well i you know i my heart went pitter patter when i saw the when i saw the gameplay footage like that footage looks really good the feathers it's, yeah man. it's pretty yeah <laughs> the, the animation the sound the sounds that that beast thing makes yeah oh so, yeah some 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 sound mixer just had a field day yeah it sounds like a <laughs> it, it sounds like a mixture between a, a frog and a kitten <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my gosh that looks really really good um, one thing i noticed and i just i i think i asked about it after i don't know if this was just me but the the boy looked kind of super 
hand-drawn anime style. Like, he looked very much on that end of the spectrum. And then the animal looked very, like, hyper-realistic hmm. um, on the opposite end of the spectrum. It just felt it, it felt like a weird juxtaposition. Like a mismatch. That the, the boy's style did not fit with the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know what to make of that, but... Neither yeah. do I... Mm-hmm. I wasn't looking at the boy. At the, at the boy. At the boy. <laughs> I turned into Cole, sling blade move, there. I was gonna say, did you just move down south? What happened? <laughs> yeah, I, turned into, I turned into sling blade momentarily. Um, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't so much looking at the boy, but that environment. Just like, oh my gosh, looking out at those towers and at the scaffolding and looking down at the at the muck below. Holy shit! But you're yeah. right. Like the the style mismatches a little bit. Uh, Maybe the way he was lit too. Like he was almost always in full light, whereas the as the 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 monster or whatever his name is was big enough that he was casting a lot of shadows on himself. Yeah, well, that, and that's the interesting thing is like the the games from that developer have done some very interesting and and subtle and nuanced things with light, um, and and kind of subtle variations in the past. So I, it makes me wonder if it's intentional or just because they went with placeholder art or something like that. Yeah, some, somewhere in between. Yeah, I was gonna say I would withhold judgment until I see the like the final copy. But oh sure, yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so Dennis, what uh, what what impressed you from the Sony conference the most? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh so I I don't have the nostalgia for a lot of the games that that a lot of people were really excited about. So I'm gonna go with uh, with Horizon Zero Dawn. Hmm. Um, just kind of the the guerrilla games branching out into a completely new IP, um, to having a really original world um that doesn't fall into any of the traditional archetypes that you would expect mm-hmm. um and and to go with a strong uh, female lead was was cool to see so yeah. I, i'll be excited to watch that one develop although i'm i'm not holding my breath for it to come out anytime soon apparently the publishers tried to uh that they, they, they were nervous about uh having a female lead in the game like that, that yeah. was that was a story that came out hmm. yep yeah, which is it's it's rare that that's confirmed while the game is in development. But uh, yeah, yeah, there's there's a there's a bit of it's nice to have a bit of honesty with like yeah, we focus group test the hell out of this stuff because we're nervous about what'll sell mm-hmm. versus like trying to pretend like it's it's you know something that it's not. So yeah, yeah, the 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 world it's like uh it, it's like Monster Hunter meets the Crudes meets RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I read a description that said brave with terminators. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys make of this dreams um, game? I'm super excited, but I don't think it's a game. I think it's a, an updating of wacky worlds for the Genesis. Yeah. I'm super skeptical. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I don't like, know. I have to see more on it before I can really form much of an opinion, to be honest. Yeah. I, so I think, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think my thing with that is like Little Big Planet was awesome when it came out because it was so original and so novel. Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen anything about Dreams, so maybe it's much different than Little Big Planet. But if it's anything similar, then I might be kind of underwhelmed by it. It doesn't look like a game yet. Like I don't, I don't know what you do in it it's aside an, from an animation make stuff. studio. Yeah, that's what it. Yeah. That's what it seems to be. And I dig the aesthetic. I like that, and I think that there's poss- like a possibility for it to be a game there. Like if they figure out a way to make you know creating 3d worlds to move around in um reasonable for you know somebody with just a six axis and a dream um yeah. then <laughs> I, I see what you I, did there I, a dream. I, not not even intentionally <laughs> um then, then 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 i you know kudos to them for doing that i just i don't see what it, what's there and there were some hints to that they like they they came at it obliquely about different mechanics but not really anything that you can hang your hat on you know that's kind of why i'm i'm reserving some kind of judgment until i figure out what exactly they're doing with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i i think there's something powerful about being able to have a unifying aesthetic to everything because mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of things where i've i've you know personally i've got cool ideas or or things that i would draw or or write or, or create or what have you um but it just i get overwhelmed by not being able to have it feel like it has a level of polish mm-hmm. just because I'm, I'm not skilled to that level and so little big planet was huge for me um because you can kind of build what you're thinking of and just the tool set that they give you means it's going to look like it all hangs together by default almost um and and i see dreams as an extension of that it's like hey we're going to give you an animation studio to that's that's really accessible and it will just kind of 
automatically, um, you know, give things a level of finish that makes it all hang together better than you could if you were just working from scratch. Yeah. So that, that's enabling to me, and I'm excited mm. about that piece of it. Um, I, unless they give me a compelling reason, it's like, I, I at this point, it's like I, I should almost invest in learning one of those from <laughs> from scratch studios yeah. versus versus kind of doing this this halfway point. But if yeah. there's a compelling game there, then then great. Mm. Jala, what stuck out to you? Um, Final Fantasy VII's being remade. <laughs> That's a thing. So we were. So I know lots of, of Final Fantasy freaks are going to be spazzing, or already have by this point. <laughs> Cole, I think you were borderline gibbering during this. this, <laughs> this uh... So I was, you know, I was not not, not like skeptical is the wrong word, but like uh, you know, let's let's go to this theater and you know watch this rebroadcast or simulcast thing from Sony. Like, oh, okay, I I I didn't really have a read on what the room was going to be like, or like what my reaction was going to be to you know to to being in that but when when i realized what it was i i I sensed everybody else in the room was doing the same thing i was doing (laughs) which is like no no come on what (laughs) wait a minute come on (laughs) so so yeah like and immediately after this a bunch of a bunch of articles came out saying like oh you know don't get your hopes up it can't be as good as what you're thinking it's going to be this is so ambitious for all the reasons they said this is never going to happen and much like so ben this is my last guardian i'll believe it when i see it first (laughs) of this this thing isn't coming out until at the very earliest 2017 because hey we'll release this on the 20 on the 20th anniversary but okay. um, mm-hmm. they made a good yeah. trailer for it at the very least. I'm excited about this because I never played the first one. So <laughs> this will give me an entry point into that. Yeah, just wait for this one to come out. Assuming it is at all faithful and at all fun to play. Um, yeah, the original is is definitely hard to go back to if you don't have any nostalgia buoying you through it. Well, that, yeah. that's well, what I was going to say is does faithful are faithful and fun to play mutually exclusive as the game is <laughs> aged? <laughs> I mean, as long as it tells a similar story with, you know, comparable themes, like that, that that's what I want. I want it to be narratively, n- narratively faithful, um, aesthetically excellent. And um, from a gameplay standpoint, um, updated, but, uh, but, but, but still reminiscent of a turn-based RPG. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're still going to make a lot of money on it either way, yeah. but. People are clamoring. Mm-hmm. People are clamoring. Yeah. So with Last Guardian, Final Fantasy VII, and then the Shenmue Three thing, which looks like mm-hmm. a real boondoggle, like as excited that I am that that's, you know, po- a possibility, $2 million, and then coming out and saying, yeah, we're going to need $10 million just to make this an open world game. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> I'm actually going to need $10 million to uh, be rich. So <laughs> I don't think he's going to run away with it, but the most notable, I mean, not the most notable thing, but one of the most notable things about the original Shenmue was that it, you know, massively went over budget. Like it cost $40 million to make over budget, <laughs> over time, all of that, which is just a terrible mix with Kickstarter. So like, <laughs> it's cool that there's a publisher willing to give them a chance. And obviously there's a lot of support for it, but wow. Oh, wow. Is that a bad match? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just enough rope to hang himself. Actually, way more rope than he needs to hang himself. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Like reams of spools? <laughs> spools of rope. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo, kind of a weird conference. Anything stick out? Metroid! <laughs> well, it's not actually Metroid. In fact, let me point <laughs> you to this change.org petition uh, to, try and make people, try, to try and make Nintendo stop making this game. I don't <laughs> actually think that. I'm making fun of those people. Well, it's supposed to be a co-op Metroid game. Okay, it's it's hunters. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's a sports a, a, from you know like a sportsy type of shooter. Whatever. I don't know. Is it like yeah. volleyball? I don't even know. That's a that's a mini game inside of it, like that blast ball thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. But the so I I've played um, recently the Wii U Metroid like Meverse game, mm-hmm. and just this that's it, my impression. F- having not engaged with it too much is like this is that <laughs> i yeah i haven't played that one i ha- like i have it but i haven't played it it's it's like cartoony run around and shoot things in an arena mm, yeah very light and bouncy yeah i mean like this is this is a sequel to hunters or you know an updating to hunters which was a ds game that was more of a tech demo for the ds but it was just a first person multiplayer shooter 
um, and <laughs> that's there. Like, I mean, there's probably an argument to be made that this, you know, just has Metroid on it, so it'll sell, and it's making yep. people angry. <laughs> but, like, this being made doesn't mean that there's not, like, th- this isn't taking up a Metroid slot. No. <laughs> right? <laughs> if, no. They want, if they wanted to make a Metroid game, they would make a Metroid game, and yeah. chances are you probably wouldn't want to play it. So... <laughs> Mm. yeah um i think that uh, mario and luigi paper jam looks pretty cool yeah that's legitimately probably the best one i saw <laughs> and then star fox zero is being made by platinum platinum makes good stuff even though i couldn't care less about star fox yeah wow uh, dennis ben anything about nintendo nope nah, not that's really it's not my <laughs> not my wheelhouse I, uh, localizing mother I, I figured it would be something that we get a mention from you but we almost glossed over it yeah I, I I posted about it on the Watch Out for Fireballs uh, Facebook page, and it's like, hey, here's this thing. And everybody said, it's really grindy. Um, it's pretty interesting narratively, but it's not that fun to play. I was like, oh, okay. It's cool. <laughs> like, everybody says, well, if this gets them closer to doing Mother 3, then... <laughs> yeah. But Start I that don't... train rolling. Yeah, like, let's, let's, let's get that happening, I guess. But, yeah, all, all of that cynicism. Man, like, this is just a a very weird conference in terms of things people never thought would happen and then half delivering on them. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like the, the industry <laughs> simultaneously wished like every publisher or developer wished on a monkey's paw. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good way to say it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Square Enix had kind of a weak conference. Notice we didn't yeah. even mention Ubisoft. Like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Still around. Yeah. Uh, but Square Enix near two people are excited about that. Uh, everybody says I should play near. I'm excited about Hitman. Yeah, Hitman looks pretty sweet, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, high def trailer, him killing people, standard <laughs> Hitman fare. Yeah. Do we do we know anything about the about the play on that, or is it too soon to tell? Uh, I I only watched the trailer, but I haven't read anything beyond that. Hmm. Are you keeping yourself unspoiled? Uh, I'm not seeking it out. Let's put it that way. Okay, I got you. Huh. And uh, these random games, I just pulled these. You know, there's always the the, the chaff that doesn't fit into any conference. Uh, um, Telltale and uh, Skybound have announced The Walking Dead Michonne, which is kind of like a mini series. It's not a full new season of uh, The Walking Dead games, but it follows uh, the Michonne character from the comics and the and the TV show. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water is coming to Wii U. And for some reason, Nintendo saw fit to not include that in their <laughs> conference, which <laughs> is, is baffling to me. We need to bury the lead. <laughs> oh, well. Any any kind of like final thoughts, stuff that we didn't mention in this that uh, stuck out to you about E3, um, games, summing ups, summings up? Uh, the thing that I was excited about for Fallout 4 it's just that it's more Fallout. Like nothing. Like, I mean, there's, they have some new features, I guess. But it was just like, oh yeah, that game's awesome. Let's play that. And they specifically said, like, we're not going crazy with the graphics. Like, what you see is, you know, not that spectacular because we want to focus on the play, mm-hmm. which, which is, is refreshing. It's it's heartening, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's understanding what makes Fallout a good game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm super jazzed about that. This is exciting. Like, I didn't expect to be as jazzed about some of this stuff, you know, the monkey's paw comment aside. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's an expectations thing. It's, like, you know, the year after the whole new generation launches, they've kind of shot their wad. And you just go in figuring like, OK, we'll get one or two, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, maybe good things out of the entire conference. So I think I think that that set the mood for mm-hmm. for really nice surprises. Yeah. Looking up and down this list, though, a bunch of people are saying spring 2016 for a lot of this. And I'm going to be surprised if that doesn't turn if a lot of these don't turn into uh, uh, holiday 2016. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Jala, any final thoughts? Nope. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis? Um, my, my thought was, you know, we went and saw the, the Sony E3 experience and that's the second time I've done it out of, out of two times at times it's been offered. And I think that continues to be a worthwhile experience, uh, not for the extra content you get after that was kind of (laughs) trudgy that, you know, there wasn't, there were nothing interviews that didn't reveal anything significant. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the, the atmosphere while you're watching it. Like just watching E3 with a crowd is is a lot of fun. So I, I was really taken off guard by that. Actually, like it wasn't a full theater, um, but it seems okay. So every time you know, like Destiny or Call of Duty was mentioned, there was an audible boo 
from the crowd (laughs) and like maybe it's because my last experience with the 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 game playing public at large was you know four years ago when i last worked at gamestop but like people would have eaten that stuff up so like maybe it's you know just low again low expectations but like when that happened i wasn't happy people were booing because i wanted to hear what they were doing with this stuff because who knows it might be important but yeah like my read on the room was entirely off hmm yeah, it was it was interesting. I, although I think part of it is the the type of gamer that would seek out this conference mm-hmm. is more likely to be interested in the non super mainstream stuff. That's weird. But yeah, yeah like so- Shenmue, the the reaction for Shenmue and, and Final Fantasy was was incredible. Mm-hmm. So, Ben. Yeah, so I was going to say there are two games that we didn't mention. Uh, the Star Wars Battlefront trailer came out last week. Yes, it was. Any any reactions for that or oh, look so that is the one game where I looked at the graphics and and just like really was blown away by them. Yeah, I agree that I think the graphics look really good. I'm very nervous about the gameplay of it though because it looks like a Call of Duty game and not a <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront game. Hmm. But I, I you know I withhold judgment I guess because they didn't show enough of what I'm excited about with those games, which is the uh, the ship combat. Oh <laughs> so. yeah. God, I'd forgotten all about the ship combat in that, yeah. those games. Like there was a little bit, like they showed a little bit of it, but there was not enough for me to really like latch onto and draw a conclusion. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah. And then also No Man's Sky. I don't think they really updated anything with it, but they, they did. A, they did a live demo. I don't know. Like that's kind of like dreams for me. I don't know what that game's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every I, I read a ton of articles coming out of E3 that was like, okay, we have such a such a better understanding of what No Man's Sky is, and it was still really vague. Um, it looks like I, I'm still excited for it, mm-hmm. and I, I I couldn't quite get a read. Did you guys think that the demo was truly unscripted? Like, I'm going to pick a random planet. They've talked about afterwards how they're happy. Like there was an article that said we're we're, we're happy that we didn't go to Planet Fuck It or something like that. Like yeah. that's one that came up for it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I have no reason not to think that it wasn't scripted. Yeah, but... that's that's bold, and and how cool it looked on the planet he he landed um, mm-hmm. was was intriguing to me. Yeah. So I think the the big challenge now is like, okay, you you've got what feels like a big universe. You need to jack up the variation on this stuff, yeah, um, as much as you can. I just like they they need to feel so different from each other. I don't know what that scale provides to the game. Honestly, like they, you know, they, they, they talk about the scale a lot. And for mm-hmm. me, like as much as random generation is cool, something that is entirely random might as well be effectively just meaningless, I guess, which is, which mm-hmm. is to say, okay, well, anything can happen. Then it, it might as well be that nothing happens that like, I, I, I like random generation that has like some kind of constraint around it. Yeah. Sorry. Don't, don't, I, I, that's a good distinction to make. I want more variance. I don't want more randomness. Yeah. So that, that, and when I say variants, I mean that there need to be different types of worlds that invite you to do different things. Yes. So it's not just, hey, go to this planet, tag some wildlife, shoot the sentinels or whatever it is, and then upload it to Beacon and then go to the next planet. Right. Yep. Yeah. Like, it just, if, if that's the entirety of the loop, I can see it wearing thin very quickly. Yeah. You don't want to play a game of fetch quests? <laughs> no. I mean,. <laughs> There's enough of that. <laughs> it, it, like it, it looks super pretty. Mm. <laughs> don't don't you know? Don't don't get me wrong. There, I just again, I don't know what there is to do. Mm. Yeah, the, the the spore character creation looked really pretty as well. So yeah, huh? Yeah, spore is actually a really good point of comparison for that. Yeah, huh. I'm I'm one of the idiots who got sucked into buying the character creator before the game launched. Me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then and then never bought the game. <laughs> well, I think that's E3 2015. Yay! Yeah, only only a week late. Yeah, we did it in like a half hour too, so awesome. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we interact with you, the listeners. Dennis, what is the question that you put out to our uh, to, to these kind folks? Yeah, my question was about consoles, like you said at the top. Um and just there's there's a lot of them out now that we're in this this current gen and, and there's a lot of gaming history behind us. So I was just curious how many consoles people actually owned and how many they actually used. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, a lot of these have ended up being um, inventories, <laughs> which, yeah, which is cool. So I probably lead to a chart. 
Possibly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, so it depends on how bored you get. Uh, so I may be traffic directing us to the ones that have commentary with them and that are not just list. Don't, uh, d- don't, don't feel bad. It's, we're just looking for that. <laughs> It'll still get some use in a list, perhaps. Yes. There will be a, a chart. <laughs> there, yep, there we go. There will be charts. The um, sequel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, ben, what does Allison say? Allison says, I've owned a lot of consoles. I've been gaming since the Atari era and have had all of them at one point or another. Lately, though, my PS4 is the only one that gets any use. I'm still not sure why I bought an X-Bone. Yeah. That's a common <laughs> sentiment across this. Backwards is, uh... compatibility. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. But what if she already owns an Xbox 360? My head yes. hurts. Then you just got X boned. Yeah. For the for the upscaling. Maybe. I guess. But it already. I guess it doesn't do 1080. It just. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Better controller feel. Connect <laughs> integration. I'm trying. <laughs> Stop. I'm it's I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, just let it die. Jalo, what's Glenn say? Glenn says, I own too many for my own good, but lately I'm bouncing between my PS4 to play Witcher 3 and my PC to play The Old Republic. Yeah. That's funny, uh, because Witcher 3 runs on those. I'd be curious why he opted to get a PS4, or Witcher 3 on PS4. Hmm. Hmm. But mm-hmm. sadly, we will not be able to tell. Uh, I will get Brian Russell Wade here. Too many. I've got the current gen set under the living room. The X-Bone is my roommate's. And an extra HDMI cord plugged in to hook up a PS3 slash 360 on demand since they don't fit. Hmm. In the office, there's a CRT next to my PC that has a rotating cast of retro consoles hooked up. Um, And then he lists a bunch of those. And then also he has these handhelds as well. Um, 3ds vita game boy advance etc i like that uh, concept that i need to find a good crt tv i'm terrified to have one because of how heavy and how impossible they are to move they are (laughs) i I have one in my guest bedroom (laughs) well that's for that's yours it's for your guest bedroom this this is true. I guess uh, that that was not an offer for you to take it, so I don't know why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah. To flaunt it, I guess. Yeah, just rub it in. Neener, neener, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I say that, but I'm not a retro purist. So it's it's not something that I'm like, well, I'm going to take this and plug it in, and I'm going to get the real experience. Like, no, I'm just going to fire it up in an emulator or play it on the, mm-hmm. the whatever virtual console. Like, I guess that's not a thing. Two words. Rock band. I, I, when I made the switch to an HD TV, I just, it's probably mostly or entirely psychological, but I could not get the lag, you know, differences out of my head. And I would constantly, constantly fiddle with the lag settings. Really all I needed to do was pick one and just get used to it. (laughs) Right. Like that's, that's all I needed to do, but I, I could not let it lie. And so the only way I can play the games that I, I really enjoyed through college would be to be on a CRTV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose I just, I, I don't know. I always trusted like from rock band two on, you could see, you could do the auto, the, uh, the auto lag from the, right, from the it, guitar, yeah, which, which any sane person would do <laughs> just have this weird, like OCD nature to try to get it as perfect as possible. And that seems to change depending on the day. So, mm, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. The, the, depending on whether we're like in the midst of a solar wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I if if I could have like a one of those what is it like you know electromagnetic boxes or cages built around that people a, build around a, their speakers a Faraday cage <laughs> sure that I don't know the but if I could have that for for video lag I I would do it so <laughs> you're gonna be an audiophile but for video if only there was a word for that yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I fully acknowledge it is unhealthy and and uh, irrational. But. Yeah, when you, when you start replacing the buttons on your remote control with wood buttons because it sounds more natural, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got a problem. Uh, D- Dennis, what does Russell say? Russell says, I have an old broken NES, NES and Super Nintendo in a box under the stairs. I can't bear getting rid of them but I don't need them anymore because of emulation. I kind of want to mount them on wooden plaques like hunting trophies. You need to do that. <laughs> Send pictures when you do. Yeah. You are on assignment now, Russell. Um, I also have a PS2 and Xbox 360, <laughs> but neither have been used much since I got a gaming PC. Damn Steam backlog. You're here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seriously, that is the coolest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it depends. Like, I, Is the Super Nintendo one of those crazy nicotine stained ones? 
because that would that would go even better yeah. against the against the wood. Right. You should open the Nintendo's uh, case like it's a mouth open, and then yeah, I don't know. <laughs> put googly eyes on it. Bring it yeah. up like it's a big mouth Billy Bass. <laughs> big, big mouth Bayou Billy. <laughs> Oh no, not my Billy. <laughs> cool. Writing that one down. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Ben, what does uh we're going to skip down here to Jeff. Jeff says, uh, I have six consoles, only two of which I haven't used aggressively as video game devices. My PS2 was, prim- was a primary device, and one of two I have uh, the most games for. The Xbox 360 might still be the most used system, and it was my college go-to for playing uh, alone or with friends. My Wii wasn't used as much as I thought it would be, because the best games for it came out while I was busy with the 360. I'll still need to try the try out Last Story, Xenosaga, and a few other choice titles eventually, but motivation isn't really there. My Game Boy Advance has survived and helped me survive countless road trips from my youth despite having really small collection. Uh, you can only play Fire Emblem Sacred Stone so many times. <laughs> and finally, my PSP, a late edition, uh, but I got pretty much as soon as the Vita came out. Basically a Final Fantasy machine as it holds RPGs from PS1 that I never played or the odd unique title of a series I care about. I've used them all in one way or another, but the Xbox 360 has Dark Souls, and I don't think I've liked a game as much as that since Final Fantasy in high school. Nice. Boom. Yeah, I don't know that I have anything to add to that. <clears throat> uh, let's, let's hear Jala. How about uh, Robin? Robin says, The PC is definitely my main platform right now. My PS3 and 360 see some still see some occasional use when not not being relegated to Netflix and YouTube duty. Connect voice commands are pretty great for lazy Sunday binge watching, as long as the show doesn't have (laughs) phrases that sound like Xbox pause, rewind home. (laughs) That said, I have a hard time letting go of nostalgia and still have a working PS2, PS1, GameCube, and SNES in my apartment. The 3DS and DS Lite also still uh, also see some regular use when I'm not using my phone for mobile gaming. That's a pretty good case for the uh, for the connect. I I don't know. I I forget that that's a thing that's on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. As long as you don't watch Sex Fox Flaws, yeah. then you're good. <laughs> Damn it! You beat me to it. <laughs> that's yours as good as mine. No, it was nowhere. It was it was half formed. <laughs> so it was mine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, Roop writes in to say, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, but uh, Roop Pernu, uh, I'm not using the older ones, but my consoles are. NES, SNES uh, continues on with those. I only use the PS3 and I buy re-releases or use ROMs. I know it's heresy to many, but I find it more enjoyable to use keyboard and 360 controller uh, rather than many of the older ones. Uh, referring to emulation there. Speaking of the older consoles, the Mega Drive's controller is the one for me, as that's a console that I used the most when I was a kid with enjoyable games like Chuck on, Terminator 2, and Quackshot. Quackshot? Quack that's Shotgun! pretty good. Somebody else has played it! <laughs> <laughs> Did you think this was kind of some kind of hysteria? <laughs> I'm just looking uh, up Quackshot. What? <laughs> what kind of game is Chuck on? Uh, it is based on an indie comic. It was uh, had a super cult following. I suggested it for Abject Suffering at one point mm. just because it's really difficult. We have like yeah. 700 games on that list. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Dennis, what's At least Bi- 700. I know Bayou Billy was actually one. Of- <laughs> yeah, no good. Oh. Bayou Billy was, on, what was one of them? Uh, Adventures of Bayou Billy was another one I suggested for you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's why you that's why you <laughs> shuddered when I made a joke about it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Quackshot is a is like a a, a Disney Donald Duck game. Oh, um, mm-hmm. looking reminiscent of of like some kind of Ducktales, or uh, what was that Ducktales? Yeah, it's some some kind of Ducktales game. Hmm. So, yeah. That yeah, I've never heard of that. That 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 actually sounds interesting. Huh. Oh. Dennis, what does Sean say? Sean says. I have all the Nintendo consoles, but only use my Wii U and Wii. The second is mostly a Netflix box. I also have a PS2 and Dreamcast, but I haven't dusted them off in a very long time. My son has a 360, which is pretty much a Minecraft machine. Oh, my God. 
uh, <laughs> handheld devices. I have a Game Boy, GBA, DS, DSi, 3DS, and 3DS XL. I leave the 3DS on to get the Street Pass and use the 3DS most days. Uh, finally, I got a Virtual Boy BC before children, <laughs> and it's proudly on display in my den downstairs. Nice. I, I wonder how long that is going to stay like on display, because if I was a little kid and I saw that, I'd be like, what's that? I need to play it. Because... Yeah, this is you mean, I didn't wear it in my head. I can enter the Matrix. Give it to me. Yeah. I mean, for, for, for as shoddy as the Virtual Boy is, like that is still an, an enticing concept. But yeah. then again, yep. when this kid grows up, there's going to be like Oculuses in mm-hmm. school and stuff. And like, what's and this? Morphe- G- yeah, get out of the way, old man. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Let's see here. Um, uh, ben, what does Josh say? Josh says that freaking setup from the f- <laughs> in the photo is awesome. Uh, I got a small place, a girlfriend who hates clutter, and an old ethos to get rid of old when when the getting is the new. Uh, so my Atari 2600, NES, Turbo Graphics, Genesis, PS1, Xbox, and PS2 are all in a landfill somewhere. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sad. Yeah, that is sad. You should like give it to Goodwill and not throw it away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Goodwill is just a like a stop on the way to the landfill. Like, <laughs> or maybe he was calling Goodwill a landfill. Yeah, oh. that'd be. That's, that's actually their new tagline. <laughs> good, Goodwill just a stop on the way to the landfill. <laughs> Good, good. Yeah, you know, lifestyles of the recently deceased. Goodwill isn't oh. as uh, it, and did it make you sad? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Goodwill isn't as good as it used to be. No, yeah. for costumes. Okay, it's Will. <laughs> Matt, 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 Will. Damn it, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, let's see your Jala. What does Gustavo say? Currently, I only own my PC and a Wii U. The Wii U is taking most of my free time because Splatoon is fresh as fuck. I feel like I need to get in play Splatoon. I yeah, I'm probably closer to buying a Wii. This is this is scary. I'm probably closer to buying a Wii U than any other console. Wow, that's mm. nuts. Yeah, I mean it's I not know. like not nuts because the Wii U is bad. I really like the Wii U, but can you justify that? Um, Splatoon. Okay. Uh, and also new super mario bros which is like a, a platformer that my wife and i would enjoy playing together so yeah super mario 3d yeah, world you two would love s- to play that as well like yeah exactly so a- yeah yep i figured you want to get a wii u because that's where you and your wife can play so yeah yeah and basically i want a wii u because of splatoon and nintendo games mm-hmm. which i guess splatoon is kind of a nintendo game yeah uh, there, there was a bit of a non sequitur in one of the previous ones about a setup. Uh, Dennis, uh, people can go to the Facebook page and look at this. This is a, a picture that I've seen before. Some, like somebody at work pointed it out to me. Uh, it's like this massive setup. It's like one of those IKEA cube shelves, but it's like massive. Yeah, like- it is. It's like four by six. Yep. Um, four high, six wide. Uh, that is full of. Uh, there's a there's a console in each cubby, and it has uh, like each of them is LED backlit. Like, oh, wouldn't you love to have this? And it's like, no, that actually just looks like a panic attack to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, someone someone did it hazard. because it makes for a really cool picture. Right. I don't see it being practical. Like when I look at that, all I can think of is the wires behind it, and also what kind of what kind of monstrous switching apparatus is needed to feed all of those. A rat king and a console master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But uh, I mean, and I like I like how there are consoles outside of the cupboards as well. There's I, a PS3 thing on top of it. Yeah. It's almost like. <laughs> If you have 24, uh, maybe 25 and 26 are not that far behind. <laughs> but then you can't do a square. Uh, five by five? Uh, I guess 25 would work. You could do two by 13 for this 26. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Damn it, Ben. Your math yeah, you is could, has no... You run into problems. problems at 29, but even then you could do one by 29. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a rug. <laughs> <laughs> a console rug? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I look at that and I think this that must take an hour to dust every time you dust it. Or <laughs> moreover, you likely There's just don't dust, dust it. Yeah. Like like yeah. um everything I like everything that's anybody does with their house, I look at it and I think, man, how do you dust that? <laughs> <laughs> uh man. Uh, so jolly you just did Gustavo. Um 
uh, then, then, then it is my turn. Uh, let's see here. Dustin says, I own six consoles, PS2, uh, PS3, PS4, Dreamcast, um, N64, but most regularly play the PS4. Yeah. yeah and that's, shout that's, out to him for posting his own setup, which yeah. is pretty badass. Yeah, it's got that there. He's got uh, um, a bunch of like Nintendo plushies on top of it. I'm only seeing one, two, three, four, five, six boxes in your in your setup, so mm-hmm. you need to step up your game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What game is that on the screen? Let me get it here. Huh, looks it like something. It's like Hunk from Resident Evil. It does. This might be some kind of like Operation Raccoon City kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. Um, we'll just do Dustin. <laughs> and uh, Dennis, round us out with Robin Gilmore. Yeah, Robin says uh, PS1, 2, 3, 4, Xbox 360, 1, meaning Xbox One, Wii mm-hmm. U. Uh, we're a family of five, and we have them all hooked up to two to three TVs around the house. We all play. I even have a 1990s laptop for playing one game, which runs too fast on modern t- PCs, which I wasn't aware is is a problem it that is. you could have. Yeah. Uh, so technically, it's a console. It's insane in our house. Mm-hmm. I asked what, what that game was and haven't seen a rep- Oh, wait, no. Yeah, more it's replies. there. Uh, oh, Magic the Gathering, Duels of the Planeswalkers. Uh, and he shows a picture of the, oh, this is awesome, yeah. of a Windows 95 console. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. That's a, like, that, that's a, uh, like a, like a Lenovo, I think. You can almost hear it saying, please kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have a touchpad. It has the, uh, the little nub. It has yeah. The, yeah huh. the pencil eraser right in the middle of it. Yeah. It's a very, oh. that's a very politically correct name for it. <laughs> the nub. The nub. What, what have I said before? I, I called it a clitoris before. Yeah, that or a nipple nub is, is I think, the common parlance. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's you. That's just I've, I, I've okay. like, even in the workplace, I hear people call it that. Yeah, I've I, I've said that on the show before, and I always feel gross saying that. But <laughs> uh, it's it's like borderline an official title. I think. So. <laughs> yeah, it's the preferred, it's the preferred nomenclature. It's like a little trademark on a on an icon somewhere. <laughs> yeah uh let's see here why don't we go th- go through and do ours um just like what do we have active ben i, I assume yours is going to be pretty simple yeah i think so i just have a ps4 and ps3 right now i think if i were to get another one like from the archive i would probably want to get uh n64 mm. just so i could continue playing like smash and golden eye and mario party yeah that's the mario yeah. Kart. still kind of the only way to play those yeah yeah huh how about you dennis uh, I've got the PS3 uh, and a Wii uh, hooked up to the main TV, and then I've got a PlayStation 2 hooked up to that TV in the back room that I mentioned, the CRTV. Mm-hmm. Um, and the grand plan is whenever I get a PS4 is that the PS3 will move back to that CRTV and become the the DVD player slash uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band machine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, but then and that that's really all I have hooked up in my house is, is those three. Yeah. Huh. So so yeah, you like you are on the fence between uh, like prioritizing a Wii U and a PS4. Yeah, I just I I I've got so much legitimately good stuff on the PS3 mm-hmm. and I I god, I haven't even thought about good games on the Wii mm-hmm. that it's 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 going to be a while before I go um to a new new generation. I excuse me, I think. So. Mm-hmm. But that that's my console setup. Yeah. Jala, how about you? Well, I have a Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, PS2, PS3, and my PC, of course, which is the thing I use most often. But I also actually use my Sega Saturn quite a bit and my PS2 for all my PS1 games that I've got that hmm. aren't anywhere else. So such as stuff like Azure Dreams, which I've talked about millions of times, <laughs> and uh, Sega Saturn for import stuff mostly. Um, stuff like, for example, Shining Force 3, mm-hmm. because, you know... I've got all of that, including all the import parts. Oh, nice. So, yeah, and you play yeah, like Lunar I, on that too, don't you? Um, I actually do have the import version of Lunar on the Sega Saturn, as well as the uh, American remake on the Sony PlayStation 1. Oh, yeah, the work so design. I can play that on my PS2. Yeah. Nice. So, so yeah, I have that too. Hmm. But actually, I play my Sega CD too for a lot of my uh, working designs titles back on that too. There were some fun ones, and then of course um, the AD and Eye of the Beholder remake, which <laughs> I I was playing Legend of Grimrock for a bit, and that made me go back and want to play Eye of the Beholder. So <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, it's a lot of classic stuff there. Yeah, I actually used to have I I 
there is a large section of time where I just kind of missed out on current gen stuff because I was retro gaming so hardcore. I had pretty much every uh, uh, every one of the main old consoles. I I didn't have stuff like Jaguar and Lynx and stuff, but um, I had pretty much everything else at one point. Um, and it was me and an ex boyfriend that collected everything, and he took a large chunk of it when we split. So. Um, I just never got everything back. I just, you know, switched over to doing emulation for a lot of it. Yeah. But there are some that I still keep. So. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and for mine, I, I'm. I think I'm only going to list what's plugged into a TV because I legit have, <laughs> you know, in boxes stuff that goes back <laughs> to the NES, like consoles for days. <laughs> consoles for yeah, like <laughs> like NES, SNES, N sixty four, like you know, and like pretty much every Sega console except for uh, except for a Master System and Sega CD um, over there. In my in my portables, I have all of those still, but like plugged in to my main TV, I've got the Wii U, the PlayStation four, PlayStation three, and uh, Xbox three sixty. Um, so all of those are in there. The PS2 isn't really plugged in. That's more of like a deploy as needed as is the Wii, <laughs> depending, you know, depending on like what we're playing for WAF or whatever, but yeah, that's there. And then also the, the gaming PC is, is, is up on that. And I think I'm good on hardware for a while. Like I was mm-hmm. considered, you know, like I thought like, oh, well, you know, the Xbox one is going down in price and uh, like, maybe that's going to have, nope, actually everything I want to play on that is going to be on the PC anyway. So I like, <laughs> I'm, I'm done up and all of that fits on you know one one tv so i'm good for a good long while on that it feels like and i have all the portables that i that i would need or want to so like it's kind of a moot point what's that uh if i were to get another um gaming device at this point it would be a uh, portable i would get probably a ds or something like that. actually there's some games back on my gba that i miss quite a bit that you know uh didn't have ports past the game boy advance version um so i don't know i might go back and go get a, a old gba or you know DB- ds or possibly you know like a vita or whatnot because there are titles on portable that just aren't anywhere else that i'm interested yeah. in so like ds lights and game boy advance sps have held up very well actually mm-hmm. Like those are mm-hmm. those are incredibly durable. If you can get one that was never owned by a kid, um, <laughs> that's the, yeah. the, that is the asterisk. Oh, speaking of of portables, I, I do have a Vita on my nightstand. Oh yeah, so there is that. Yeah, nice. And that feels like it's a multiplayer. I'm sorry if we like skipped any of the responses that were just in, in, in inventory. You'll uh, be graphed. <laughs> you 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 will be graphed. <laughs> you have become part of the system. Well, Don't worry. <laughs> Man, it's so menacing. <laughs> <laughs> but if you would like to be graphed, then you can go to um, uh, facebook.com slash the level podcast in order to join in on this conversation, which happens uh, most Tuesday afternoons as Dennis puts those questions out. Thank you, Dennis. No problem. And thank you, everybody who responded. Yay! Arr. The Grind. Now it is time for The Grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing here recently. Uh, Jala, I'm going to throw to you first. Sure. So, um, first things first, I have continued playing Destiny Ninja, and I did want to say that I'm actually really starting to like the main character, much to my surprise. (laughs) Um, She actually, during the course of the different stories I've played through, helps to make battle plans to win uneven battles against the ninja's enemies and risks her life and stuff. And a a good portion of the stories that I've played through at least are more narrative driven rather than romance driven. So it's actually not like, you know, uber psychotically, Oh, here I fell over and swooned kind of dating sim type stuff. There's actually more to it than that. What's also kind of interesting is that certain characters seem to always like you regardless of whether or not you decide you want to be in a romance with them. And then you also often are, you know, uh, constantly admiring certain characters, even if you end up not in a romance with them or what have you. So, you know, like it's kind of cool that it shows, you know, these particular personalities have dispositions towards one another, et cetera, you know, uh, whatnot. So th- that's really about all I have to say about that. It actually has, um, you know, continued to be fun for me to play through just here and there. Yeah. I also have played uh, 999 on iOS, you know, nine hours, nine Ooh. persons, nine doors. Yeah. Um, so iOS I, is disappointing. <laughs> I, 
I, yes, I saw your tweet storm about this well after the fact. You, you you did that like when I was in the throes of not feeling well. And by the time I saw mm -hmm. it, it was way too late for me to respond. But uh, sum, <laughs> sum up your feelings. Well, first off, let me first say that the iOS version, there are only three places that you can make any call as to what's going on. You just basically pick a door three times. That's it. Um, all the rest of it, you are just clicking through and reading the storyline. And I've gone through the entire game and I've gotten everything except for one bad ending. I've gotten all the rest of it. Now, um, there, I, I kind of like parts of it and then I don't like other parts of it. Um, just speaking on the story, I can't talk about gameplay, obviously. Um, <laughs> mostly because there are parts where the characters are talking about stuff that com seems completely out of nowhere left field and doesn't have any relevance to the story. Um, and they're talking about it and arguing over, you know, weird nitpicky scientific crap in the middle of, Oh, you know, like we're locked in a freezer and freezing to death right now. That's <laughs> not a good time to be like having this. It's, it's stupid. Oh, you're you know, like that's just flat scene? stupid. Uh, yes. Okay. And like, whatever. I mean, like there's certain parts where I'm just like, okay, really? No, that's stupid. That just, <laughs> no, like that's, that doesn't make any sense. Or, you know, there's another part where because the main character has a crush on this other character, you know, she's like, oh, are you mean you want to know how many boyfriends I've had? Like, oh, seriously, come on, get but, over it. I mean, and not, not to, no, not to, not to spoil anything, not to spoil anything. <laughs> that, that's like right before one of the bad endings, though, like that you only get that um, like when when she is not acting appropriately. Nine. She's had nine boyfriends, right? Just guessing. but <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's no, not but, letter 23 <laughs> like, well, and i have played i have like i said i played through everything and unless that one other bad ending that is on there oh also um ios apparently has one extra ending that is not in the ds game hmm. i don't know what which ending that is but there's one that i am missing i don't know if it's the ios one or if it's one of the original endings i'm missing but um anyway unless that one just has everything makes sense suddenly by the end of the game, I get to the, the quote-unquote good end, and I'm still looking at it like, okay, I think I sort of kind of figured it out. Now, what the hell did just happen at the very end there? Like, what? Like, I mean, it, it still doesn't make any damn sense. And I'm like, okay, I whatever. Mean, it's, the, it's like, this, <laughs> it's this, interesting. This, this, isn't it's, a, this isn't a spoiler. But by, by the good ending, you mean the one that, where, where they get through the nine door? Uh, yes. Okay. Like that, well, the, then again, like on the iOS how version, is, how there's is nine more... Spelled on the that's that's actually a part of the <laughs> I mean, my hands are so fucking tied here i'm sorry german <laughs> twist well no right. no well well anyway german like in, twist in... is my favorite drink <laughs> <laughs> well it, in either case um there are things about it that i like and i definitely think that it is a game that people should play even though there are parts that just frustrate me and make me want to stab somebody in the eye for making this so long and drawn out and like unnecessary at parts. But overall, I, I still enjoyed it enough to go through and play the entire thing or quote play the entire thing on my um, phone. So, you know, I've, I've gone through that. That's okay. It's, yeah. it's interesting. It was an experience. I, it makes me want to actually play the DS game because I think with puzzles and stuff, cutting it up, it might be more tolerable than having to just jettison through the entire thing and listen to these spiels, you know, one after the other. Yeah. So, but of like, course, like, it's really frustrating when I get to any point and it's like, after solving some puzzles, they found the key. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> show, show me the inside of the fireworks factory. Don't just take me there and say, and it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I think it's just it. What ruins a large portion of it, um, and and is just that how they elected to put it on the iOS just kind of screwed up a, a lot of it. I think with the other gameplay mm -hmm. elements, it would be much more interesting and you know whatnot to go yeah. through. And, um, and that game, the, the, like that, is the one that won the uh, the the, the poll for uh, for for a watch up for fireballs. I, I will just unashamedly say I, I voted for that one, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason why I was playing it on iOS to become acquainted with it. Uh -huh. um, but, yeah, I actually have a friend in town who has a DS who they, they're going to probably get the game because of me talking about it so much. <laughs> and if they do so, they s promise that after they finished it, they will hand off the DS to me and let me play it. So... Um, here's to hoping that actually goes through and happens that, you know, he actually 
gets the game and finishes it in some sort of <laughs> timely fashion and then passes it off so I can actually play it. It's one of those uh, things that like when people pick it up, they tend to go through the entire thing. Yeah, I I kind of, uh, you know, consistently played that like when I wasn't playing my dating sim or whatnot, I was, you know, switching over to that and playing that, trying to get through it and make sense of what was going on. Mm -hmm. So um, and then I did actually have one more thing. Dennis, did you have uh, uh, did you, were, were you trying to kind of with something? Oh, yes. No, I, I I have a lot of goodwill towards the the Virtue's Last Reward uh, game, but uh, no, no knowledge of 999. I think you'd like it. I mean, if you like Virtue's Last Reward, 999 is a little bit less oh, weird. No, I remember what I was going to say is that is that I, I'm supposed to get the Dagon Rampa uh, game from you, which is in the same vein, but we, we keep on forgetting to trade oh, cartridges, yeah. if yeah. you will. You're supposed to give me tear away, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So next time we see each other, yeah, let's we'll make, that happen. make that happen. Uh, what's the other game, Jolly? Uh, Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate. So I've been playing second? that. No, no this, this is one? like, no, this is a weird halfy thing. Basically, it is a 3D game, uh, like three, 3D graphics, 2D gameplay. It is supposed to basically be the bridge between Lords of Shadow 1 and Lords of Shadow 2. Um, and actually, it, it, it plays sort of like a mixture of Symphony of the Night and Lords of Shadow. So huh. um, it's it's interesting, like it's got all the combo moves and stuff like that. But then at the same time, it has some of the uh, movement facilities and, and it, like a lot of the 2D elements and exploration Metroidvania type stuff that you would expect from Symphony of the Night type thing. So it actually plays really fun, like it really um, interesting. Um, I like the graphics and like they have a, a definite feel, like a definite creepy, weird mood to like all of the aesthetics overall. Um, the So far, I played through about half the game, which for me, given the fact that this is a larger publisher, is kind of amazing that I played through that much that fast. Um, I played through all of Simon Belmont's section, and I'm halfway through Alucard, and then there's also a Trevor Belmont section that comes after that. Um, hmm. Each of the sections of the castle in here are small. Now, if you're if you're not acquainted with this, Basically, this is at the beginning of, of Dracula being a thing. You know, Dracula is, is a, a new thing in the world. And mm -hmm. um, the castle is actually being built during this game. So there's parts on the outside that Simon has to go through, for example, where um, he, there's even, you know, stuff in the game that says, hey, the hunchbacks are adding to this area. And you can see like a big clock face, like they're adding the clock tower, but it's not in there yet. Oh. That kind of a thing. <laughs> So I'm, that was actually kind of cool. Um, I don't know how the story's going to you know, match up they, just yet because I've only seen about half of it. They might be behind schedule adding the clock face, but how could you tell? Yeah, I was going to say nobody, nobody knows how long it takes to build a clock tower. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, in either case, so it's, it's actually kind of fun. It's, got, it's, it, it's interesting because um, Simon doesn't have any puzzle type stuff, but so far with Alucard, I've had a couple of puzzles to go through and try to figure out, um, which is interesting. So um, I'm looking forward to playing the rest of it and seeing how the rest of it goes, you know, storyline wise and gameplay wise. So I'll, I'll definitely be finishing up that, that sometime soon. Uh, I actually got into a long discussion with Phil Holmes over Twitter about mm -hmm. it uh, because uh, he has a lot of dislike for Lords of Shadow. And oh, yeah. um, yep, yep. And so he's he's been kind of interested to hear my reaction to Mirror of Fate because it plays differently and, and whatnot. So, so wait a minute. What system are you playing this on? Uh, it's on Steam. Really? It was on Steam sale for three dollars and seventy four cents. So I totally picked it up because it was three seventy four. <laughs> this, this this was originally supposed to be like it was it was on three DS, right? So they must have ported it. Yep, there's okay. a lot of port type stuff up in the world. So, oh. so, so yeah, but anyway, so so that that is I was about to say this is the first positive thing I've heard about that game. This might actually be the first time I've heard about that game on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know nothing about it, and the things that you're describing make it sound like the game I want to play. Oh, it's actually a lot of fun. I've I've enjoyed it quite a bit. I wasn't so sure what I'd think about it, and when it was on sale or on sale for um, three dollars and seventy four cents, I was pretty skeptical. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it plays 
plays really well. I'm having fun with it, and I'm going to breeze through the rest of it probably after the podcast is over. I'm going to be popping it back on. So Nice. Hmm. Ben, how about you? So, yeah, this is going to turn into the what am I going to do after the podcast thing. But <laughs> Speaking I of things to pop on after the podcast. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, is, it, is it sitting in the room with you? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's, you know. Ten feet within ten feet from where I am. You're not open it. yet. You can you can say you can say that you're holding it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stroking it lovingly. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, me and Christian Bale, we're both checking it out. Uh, you know, it's 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 weird, but I decided not to have Christian Bale be on the show. <laughs> we we totally could have used that to up our cred, but uh, you know, we don't need that. We don't need him. Yeah, we don't need to play that card. We can we can make well, it on our. Used to do we can make American accent. And, you know <laughs> yeah you know no all right we're, uh anyway yeah so i'm gonna play that game as soon as we're done with this it looks really great i also played fallout shelter i already mentioned that that was super fun i can't wait for that to come out on android um and i played a little bit of the witcher 3 still good it's probably <laughs> going to be interrupted though by batman <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you know it'll it'll be there when it comes when, like when you're when you come back you'll be fine <laughs> Yeah. Do do you feel like you're like approaching the arc? Like are you are you through it or um yeah, I mean I think I'm past the halfway point at least. Um I think I'm level twenty one or so, something mm-hmm. somewhere around there, low twenties. Um it, it, I mean it basically comes down to the story is ready to move at as fast a pace as I am willing to do these storyline missions. So yeah. um I've been kind of tying up the loose corners of all the different side missions just to kind of see what those are about. Yeah. But Soon enough, I will probably <laughs> go back to critical Bran- branch Johnny. So yeah, crit- yeah. critical path Johnny, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, well, like <laughs> you did that with with Inquisition, and, and didn't it turn out that you only had like an hour left of the critical yeah, path? Something like that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the nice thing is like with this, the mission quality is a little bit higher for the side missions, so yeah. it's not as much, it's not as grindy. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, it is a lot more fun. You the areas that you explore are a lot more interesting. So nice. Uh, cool yeah. um i'm gonna do mine but here's the fake out i've played about two hours of arkham knight but oh, i'm going to save not it. talk about it <laughs> yeah i'm going to save it actually because i think it's going to be better if we double team it next week um just okay. because i my, my opinions haven't solidified yet and i want to preserve this first impression for you ben okay so yes i appreciate that yeah but uh, but yes, I, had, I I got it. I worked from home today, kind of specifically so the delivery wouldn't <laughs> be missed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 yeah, that 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 came in. Um, I would recommend the, the 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 day one patch is a real bear, but I don't think it's required. I think you can download it in the background while you're playing. Cool. So um, I would recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, it's been two weeks. I finished staying in Rampa two. Um, okay. More of that. How did that go? <laughs> uh yeah like i mean so it came together fine like the the grossness kind of abated but there's not good, really anything good. there's not really anything more that i can that i can say about it that won't be like a spoiler like it goes <laughs> you know because it's it's a visual novel and it's predicated on knowledge of the first one and like if i say oh this does for you know the second entry in this, what the second entry in this other well-regarded series did for it. Like that kind of gives away the twist. Like it's definitely more complicated than the first one is kind of to its detriment, but like, I see what they were doing. Um, which, yeah, I'm, I, I don't know. Like it's, it's hard for me to like pull up anything other than to say like, the mini games continue to be a bit of a bummer. Like I kind of wish there was a way to to skip them <laughs> a little bit and just make it like a Phoenix Wright style thing. But yeah, there's I recommend it be just because there are so few of this kind of game out there. So when you'd say it's kind of predicated on the first game, does it actually import any save data from the first game, or is it just purely story and recognizing characters and, and the setting? Uh, it's it's story setting and kind of like the setup for the way this game works compared to the first one. Actually, like there you can draw some comparisons between like what Virtue's Last Reward did in comparison to Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. Okay. Yeah. 
yeah, but this is definitely taken up to, uh, and I was about to say taken up to eleven, and I would have had to jump out a window. Um, but it, it is it is definitely much <laughs> crazier um, than uh, the, the, than the first one, which is um, which is hard to you know, like, hard to believe because the first one is already pretty nuts. Same antagonist. <sighs> I, it, you can't even answer that. <laughs> yep. So, so these story games man i know right it's like I, I i really enjoy them and like but so it's funny because i i, I hesitate because i explained to taking rapa one when i was playing that and the, like the like the loop hasn't changed like there is game here you know you're solving cases like this is the summer of detective work because i'm also doing la noir at the same time for watch out for fireballs <laughs> wait yeah. a second i thought this was the summer of ben <laughs> <laughs> it can be the summer of a lot of things <laughs> on, a, on a bunch of other shows across the network it's the summer of come so <laughs> I, I yeah i'm was... very thankful we're not one of those shows <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um but yeah i like i'd recommend it if you have played dink and rapa one but that is kind of the meekest possible recommendation you can give so huh <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, so a game I can talk about, which is kind of cool and also uh, substantially disappointing, uh, D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So last weekend, I sat down and I played all of it um, over the course of a day. That is not hard to do. It's only four hours long. <laughs> so oh, so okay. this, is, this is kind of uh, like if I were to describe it, it would be... Um, Sweary, the guy who made Deadly Premonition, his take on like a heavy rain style game. Okay. And much like Deadly Premonition, it is very high in story and quirk in terms of the characters and stuff that it, the, the, that it puts in front of you. But the actual game part of it is lacking. And that's a bigger problem here than it is in Deadly Premonition because, you know, like for as much as Deadly Premonition was just kind of like a bad survival horror game with interesting uh, cutscenes in a cool world, um, this is mostly cutscene with very limited play to the point where it actually does get in the way. And it can't really stand on the story because this is episode one of like a season kind of thing. So you play this, oh, no. and, and like right when it gets to what feels like a a, a climax, uh, it's like okay, to be continued if the second part of this has ever developed. And because I eh. went in, because I went into this not knowing anything about it, like I wanted to keep myself pristine. I was very excited about it. Um, I didn't see this coming, and when I got there, I thought, oh well, it's going to dump, dump me back to the main menu, and I'm going to select episode two. Everything's going to be gravy. No, this is just the end of this game as it exists right now. Ooh, hmm. that's harsh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But like, the premise is cool because you're this guy. Like, it takes place in Boston. And he's got a really bad Boston accent, and <sighs> like he he is trying to figure out. Um, um, what happened the, the day his wife died she, you know she was shot there's a connection between um her death and this this uh drug called real blood and uh, this this bullet that he took in his brain the, the 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 night that she died gave him this power where he can use mementos to like travel back in time to where this memento was created um mm. and everything in this game kind of takes place like you're trying to solve this case of uh like this uh, drug mule who disappeared from a plane dennis does that make uh does that sound familiar to you that does sound familiar to me <laughs> i'm not, i'm not is sure it... if it's intentional <laughs> okay i was about to say is it clearly inspired by that or i don't know like it's it's weird because <laughs> i i can't say if it's a dark tower thing but it came to mind um, nice. you know, and there's a cast of characters on this plane and you're trying to figure out because all that he knows about, uh, all the, all that your main character, David knows <laughs> about the murder is that the person who did it, their name begins with D. So everybody whose name begins with <laughs> D is a suspect. Nice. <laughs> and so you're investigating them and stuff, but you know, gameplay is obviously like, oh, this was intended to be for the connect. And you know, it's even, uh, your cursor that you're moving around looks like a hand and the, 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 uh, Quick time events and you know the heavy rain kind of style are obviously kind of meant to evoke that kind of feeling of like oh I'm waving my arms in 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 time with this but there's just not enough to it 
for mm-hmm. me for me to really for me to really say like oh you should go get this i was excited when it came out on pc and i guess that's a good thing because if they get more money and if there's enough demand for it there might be a continuation of it but like right now i just i feel kind of you know <laughs> i i feel like it was kind of, kind of ripped off i don't know like the time that well, I invested we... in it w- w- without any kind of resolution, like I'd be fine if it was a bad resolution as long as it told a, a complete story. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And did you buy this on season pass or was it, were you only able to buy the first episode? There's no season pass thing. Okay. Well, that's at least good. I was, I was going to say, we've talked on the show before about how season passes are kind of glorified pre-orders and mm-hmm. the, People seem to have done right by them so far, but that that seems to be a, a thing that's ripe for abuse. Yeah. So it'd be really sad if if this was doing that. Yeah, like I I got, I bought the super special edition or whatever, the one that's like thirty dollars instead of fifteen to get all the art and the soundtrack and stuff because I will always buy a soundtrack. Um, mm-hmm. and like the music is good, like just like Deadly Premonition, the soundtrack is great. But but yeah, like the thankfully it wasn't you know front us the money for the development of this thing although if it meant that it would be developed then i would probably feel somewhat okay with that (sighs) i don't know it's 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 a it's a mega bummer for me because i like this developer i just wish it was a more like well-considered and complete product which what sucks because I don't like I don't like thinking of games as products. Does it make you wonder if if this developer is it was just kind of a one time fluke that their that Deadly Premonition was so good and that they really don't understand what the hell they were doing? Maybe. I don't I don't know. Like there there are a bunch of auteurs that you could say the same thing for, but like from what I understand, spy fiction was pretty good and he was involved in that. I haven't played it. It could be the case. I don't know. Like I have a lot of I have, I have enough goodwill for him that I don't think this dissuades me from that this isn't uh like a like a david cage kind of situation um mm-hmm. you know but you, you could say the same thing about uh who is it suda 51 you know who this guy is obviously modeling modeling himself after but mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah so my answer to your question is i don't know i don't, I don't <laughs> think so and enough. i kind of hope i kind of hope not but it could be the case and you know somebody as close to it as me probably isn't or is somebody who has as much affection for daily premonition as me is probably not the best person to answer that because obviously Krusty's going to get here yeah right yeah hey with the last guardian Krusty get, did get here so <laughs> or or at least has That's called it. and said he's about to arrive <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Krusty said checks in the mail um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um Dennis how about you yeah, I've been playing two games. Um, the first of which was uh, recommended to me by Mikhail, uh, the Banner Saga, hmm. which is uh, which has turned out to be really good. So it was recommended because it's a a grid based, turn based uh, strategy game in the style are, that you like. In the style that I like, yeah. Um, which which I say because I like XCOM so much, but really my my experience with them is is pretty limited. Um, so I was I was really pleased with this one though. Um, it's, it's set in like Norse mythology, um, which is cool. Uh, so there's, you know, there's, there's Vikings and there's giants and there's, they're kind of holding, holding off this, uh, this, uh, you know, Norse zombies essentially called dredge. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a cool and unique world. Uh, but the, the grid based combat, uh, feels really good and, and deep, um, so giants take up four tiles, whereas, you know, humans take up one and there's a whole element of how you position them to, uh, either, either block other units from getting where they want to go or, or setting up combos for, um, for your unique powers per unit that, that, that's really good. Um, but I was surprised by the game by how much kind of, um, text adventure is in it. Hmm. So I, I would say more than half of the game is is kind of reading text and choosing responses. So it's like, you know, Mass Effect style conversations. Huh. Um, but it's written so well that that's not a bad thing. Hmm. That's that's cool. So it's got like, I mean, we, we've kind of been put on blast for being very uh, loose with our definition of what a visual novel is. But um, that's great. Like, do you, so you feel like these choices have consequences? Is it, is it like shunting you into different battles than you otherwise would have uh, encountered if you chose differently? Yeah. 
it it before my last play sh- session, I would have said that it didn't. It, they they probably weren't making meaningful differences. Like there's a couple times where you'll make a choice and then you'll see the repercussions of that choice, but it's all kind of a a, a closed circuit. It doesn't feel like you're you're having impact on the larger story. But the last time I played it, a choice came up that that the the options on the table unless it was going to force me down one road no matter what which i I won't know unless i played again but the the options on the table felt incredibly different and would Mm. push the story in very different directions and it was it was kind of agonizing to have to like think through and and choose the (laughs) right not even the right but like what i wanted um so that that um it's is still unfolding um but is is definitely there Mm. and uh, and like i said it's it's incredibly well written there's just there's just several several lines that i've read and be like oh that's that's really good um so there's there was something about you know i'll never i'll never understand you humans you're furious when you're not in control and terrified when you are and i'm like oh, it's so good like oh huh. <laughs> um so it's, it's very just, poignant yeah yeah so it just it, it's filled with with kind of little moments like that the characters feel well developed um and, and it does feel like when you're given choices of dialogue that that you're you're able to kind of play the way that you want it to or play play the characters the way that you want to within yeah. the the overall arc that's going on there's um, a there's, so yeah. a there's a fun game you can play to determine like how much choice there is in a game um <laughs> which is to go to how long to beat and do a search for a game and check the main story figure against the completionist figure oh interesting so, yeah mm-hmm. that ratio connection. tells you yeah how many side mach- yeah like, 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 or, or just how many times you would have to go through it in order to in order to see it so like the main story on the banner saga it says 11 hours but completionist is 25 so that oh. that, that means that that branching probably probably like, probably means that the game is designed for you to go back and make a bunch of choices like that like nine, hour, nine hours nine persons nine doors says nine hours ironically enough yeah. for the main story <laughs> uh, and uh, 22 hours for completionist which makes total sense so yeah, yeah. That's, that's about on par with the banner saga so yeah. and and this is the crazy thing is like i've been talking about it like a like a visual novel mm-hmm. i kind of briefly threw off to the the gameplay in it at the beginning but the 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 actual turn-based strategy stuff is really good as well yeah um, so it hits that sweet spot where the system is is difficult enough or complicated enough that you can't just take it in at first glance. Um, I talked about Rainbow Moon in previous episodes, and I, I kind of fell away from it for the reason that every single battle, it, you could kind of immediately tell either I'm going to steamroll these people or um, I'm going to get crushed myself. And there was no in-between. Whereas this feels like, hey, there's there's a lot of nuance to it to to um, you know to to be able to win or lose battles. So it it kind of lands in that middle ground, um, but at the same time, it's accessible enough that you can kind of. I, I haven't yet, but it feels like with enough time, I'll really be able to wrap my mind around the system, uh, in a meaningful way. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not too complicated, and that's that's a really good sweet spot to hit. Yeah, where, where does the complexity line up against XCOM? um that's so tough there's there's no well (laughs) there's a very (laughs) rudimentary base building aspect to this game Mm -hmm. um which i don't totally understand like you can you can have more or less people in your um in your party and we're talking like hundreds so you're leading like a, a large group um and they can have like good or bad morale and and i think how that affects is is you have a the the game's unique mechanical twist is you every character has a certain amount of willpower to spend and willpower allows you to do uh actions above and beyond your normal limits so you could move extra spaces if you spend willpower or you could attack for extra damage if you spend willpower but you've only got so much per encounter um so it's a matter of kind of deciding when the right time to have that burst of energy is. Mm. And I think if you have low morale, um you start with less willpower and if you have high morale you start with more. That would make sense. But it's still kind of inscrutable to inscrutable to me where those where those um lines lie. But definitely simpler than XCOM um in terms of base building. Yeah. Uh probably on par in terms of grid based combat the maps are simpler so you're very much just on a on a grid there's no obstacles in the middle um but the the different ways that people's abilities uh interact uh is is i think more complicated than xcom 
so like when you say different different people like do, are these established characters that have kind of their own skill sets or is there kind of a job system involved in this there is a job system in that that I've, i'm noticing like similar titles show up um for for different people it's so, like there's warhawk is is the name of one class i guess you would call it um and i have i've seen a couple of warhawks um but at the same time the the characters that i've got feel pretty unique like i don't think i would ever roll a party with multiple warhawks the same way that i would in you know have multiple snipers in in an XCOM party so uh the characters all feel pretty significant at this point and that's that's the other, i have i have well now you've told me that it takes about 11 hours to beat but i i had no read on how far into the game i was hmm. um and it's a it's it's kind of one of those things where i can just look at the map and see how many places on the map i've gone to so far um and it feels like i'm pretty early in it which it sounds like i am um, but that's, that's kind of, there's a, there's an element of intrigue to this where I, I don't know how far in I am. Um, but yeah, the, the combat is a lot of fun. The story is well-written and, and, and there's more of that. There, there's more of a focus on that than I was expecting, but that, like I said, that's not a bad thing at all. Hmm. And that's the, that's the banner saga. Nice. That's actually one that I looked at right when it was first popping up in the world, and I was kind of curious about it, but I was so busy with other stuff at the time that I hadn't got a chance to actually go in and play it, and then, of course, it got buried under backlog and whatnot, and that's where that went, so I'll have to take a look at it again. Yeah, if you like lots of umlauts and and Norse names, this is your (laughs) bit. (laughs) Actually, I say that, I don't know how many umlauts I've seen. There's a lot of Norse (laughs) stuff in there, but... Uh, maybe it's been localized. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the the umlauts are there. They would just drive you mad if you saw them. Right. You them. <laughs> Can't fit them all on the screen. <laughs> uh, and then the other game, uh, any other questions on that one? No. The, uh, the other game I've been playing is Tomb Raider. Oh, the 2013 one? The 2013 Tomb Raider, yeah. So, uh, Ben, you will be pleased. I've stuck to it much better this time than I did the first time where I, where I kind of bounced off of it. Um, but I've, I've really been enjoying that game. How many gory ways have you seen Laura Croft die so far? I've actually, I've been pretty good. So I got, I got hit by the first quick time event crushed under a rock and I missed another quick time event that had me strangled another quick time event that had me impaled. But other than those three times the, I, I haven't really died to quick time events. All right. <laughs> yeah. Which is fortunate because it's super uncomfortable to watch someone strangle Laura Croft. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but but yeah, I. It's it's a great kind of uncharted like, if I dare call it that. Mm-hmm. Um, a little more, a little less mobile, I would say. In, in Uncharted, um, the combat and the mobility are very much intertwined, um, whereas in in Tomb Raider, it feels like more hey this is a combat section. You're kind of going to pick some cover and hide out here and shoot people. Uh, and then at the end of that, you will have a mobility section where you'll be climbing around and solving puzzles. Um, so they're, they're more separated, but they're both still good uh, mm-hmm. and, and fun to play. Um, I've also been incredibly impressed with the level design in the game. So I, I have never had to open up the map or use a way, waypoint to know oh, where wow. to go next. It's just it just all feels really intuitive without feeling like I'm in a hallway. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's uh that's that's really it's just it stuck out to me several times where it's it it just feels really good. I always know where I'm going next in the game. Now plot wise I might not always know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> um that that gets a little vague at time. Like I I get that there are ancient civilizations and I get that there are crazy cultists, which is what I want out of a Tomb Raider game. Um <laughs> yeah. and beyond that, you know, I'm kind of constantly just running for from the the next bad thing or running towards the next good thing. I don't really get it. I'm hoping dinosaurs show up at some point. <laughs> Haven't yet, but don't spoil that for me. I'm hoping. Yes. So without giving away too much, what part in the game are you at? Um, I, oh gosh, I was just about to say I had a certain character die. Um, I People have die? Gone, yeah, people die. Oh uh, no. I'm trying to think, yeah, I'm trying to think. I have, well here, I've gone back to the ship that you start on. Okay, gotcha. Yep. There's a ship. So, and that, 
that's the other thing, kind of like with the Banner Saga, where I, I had no read for how far in the game I was, and I, I it kind of felt like I was getting towards a climax at one point, and I opened up the the map, just the world map, and was like, I've I've explored maybe a quarter of this. There's no way that the game is going to end. So depending on how filled in that map eventually gets, um, this this game is big. Like it, it yeah. feels really, really uh, robust. Um, yeah. So let's. Add, I'm, I'm trying to think what else I can say. I, I like using a bow. That's that's fun. Uh, 2013 and, uh, was the year of the bow. It was the year of the bow. I'm kind of thinking like I've I've got Thief from PlayStation Plus. I'm gonna have to go play that next just so I can <laughs> have more bow and arrow. Um, Yay. so that that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm annoyed by the stealth elements in the game. Um. In that there really aren't any. <laughs> like yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Is like, when do you have to be stealthy in that game? I you guess can, there's you, a few parts. You can sneak up behind someone to kill them, but I have never had that result in actually staying hidden. Like mm-hmm. it's this the second you're spotted, everyone knows exactly where you are, and you hide behind one piece of cover until you've shot everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's it's the shooting feels good. Um, so it's 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 fun to play that way but it just feels like the game is promising hey you're this underdog who has to you know sneak around and and you have all this great mobility um that you don't use at all in combat um yeah so it's 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 a little it's it's a lot more stop and stop and pop but not even that because stop and pop you you move from cover to cover it's like you you pick a you pick somewhere dig in fight it out and then you go do the cool running around stuff wave slay yeah yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, again, I, I don't want to say that it's a bad thing. It's a, it's a, so they have stealth mechanics that are underutilized. I can say that. And it, it kind of promises a little more stealth than there actually is in the game. Once you accept that it's not that kind of game, you're fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the tombs are pretty cool. The tombs are pretty cool. So the, the way I've experienced the tombs so far... Um, is, you know, you find a lot of the tombs are just straight up optional. Um, mm-hmm. and they, they act as their own kind of isolated puzzle level. So you go yeah. into one and you're kind of away from all the bad guys in the shooting. And it is that, that mobile mobility and traversal stuff, uh, and, and plus pu- puzzle solving. Um, and the game does that really well. Um, I've, the puzzles have been challenging without requiring me to go look up a, a fact. And that's that's um, that's saying a lot, given I'm, I've kind of have a low tolerance for being stuck. Uh, so so that's that's yeah. good. It's kind of the sweet spot. I feel like it's kind of like early missions in portal games where it's like simple enough. But yeah. Yeah. And, and it's but short. Rewarding. Like you kind of there's there's one thing you've got to figure out one one way you've got to twist your thinking. And once you've got that, when you're like, aha, I got it. OK, I figure this out. You get the treasure and you get out of the tomb. Like it doesn't, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, the puzzle structure has been, has been very rewarding so far. Mm. Nice. Uh, yeah. So that's, 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 um, I've been enjoying that one. I'll probably, uh, continue that one through to the end. It's really funny because that game just, it's more than any other, I think gets passed around on us. Like you, you, know, yeah. you, 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 had, <laughs> you, you did that sp- like that sheet a while ago, but I think that that like Tomb Raider 2013 is up there in the games that we continue to talk about. And like, even though it gets stretched out further and further, like if I pick this up, God help us <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. because, because we will have to, we will have been talking about this for three years. Yeah. But Ben, did you finish it a hundred percent? Um, I don't, I mean, I beat the game, but I don't know if yeah. I did everything. Yeah. Sorry, that's that's what I meant to ask. Is did you did you finish the story? Um, yeah. I played. I played. Gosh, it was like the first two missions, not even, and bounced off of it just because I got distracted. Uh, I don't know how far money's gotten, but yeah, this this has gotten some longevity to it. Hmm. Well, pretty cool. I'm glad you're having fun with it. Hmm. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Hey Ben, you want to bundle it up? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> okay. The credit. Oh, I've been holding you guys hostage. I didn't realize. <laughs> well, I'm going <laughs> to bed. I should have done. I've I've already got my my, my launch day. <laughs> Batman. Ben, ben is the one who's being held hostage. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, but thank you everybody for listening to uh, level 109 or so. I think that's what it is. 
um, of this uh, of this podcast. I don't want to belabor the the admin stuff. I wanna I wanna let Ben go. But you know the usual things that you can do. Uh, Facebook is a great way uh, to talk with other fans of the show. Uh, I would love to get that uh, get that number up. Uh, like let's try and like beat two hundred likes. That's our next milestone. That's what I want to get. Um, Are we close? I, we're at one forty right now. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same high, you know. But uh, but yeah, that's a uh, we, we we really appreciate everybody participating there. Uh, and then also, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. Uh, but otherwise, since you're listening to this, you know how to get the show. So um, until next time, I've been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. I've been Dennis Furia at D Furia on Twitter. Always Jala Chan. That is all. I've been Ben Merkley, Merkley on Twitter. <laughs> and until next time, uh, stick around for the title. We've got a couple of doozies. All right, guys, let's do this real quick. Um, the first one is just I, good, good. What? There's two that I feel like should be at least candidates. So we'll see if you <laughs> say okay. them or not. All right. Yeah. So, so use this as an opportunity, uh, to, to, to add them in. But the first one's just for me. I just want to say a medic edition because we were talking about making it throw up. That's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nausea. Um, <laughs> momentary sling blade, <laughs> <laughs> big mouth Bayou Billy. That one's yeah. up there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, German twist. <laughs> uh, Krusty said checks in the mail. <laughs> okay. What is it? Ben, anything yeah. I didn't say? All right. So I have okay, Will. <laughs> and <laughs> you will be charted. Whoa. You will be charted. <laughs> Okay. What's okay, Will? Instead of goodwill? Not goodwill. Just oh, okay right. Will. Yeah. yeah, okay, Will. <laughs> there we go. You will be charted. Yeah, this is this is tough. Yeah. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to I want to get people's ability just to just pick a favorite, even if you, if you, uh, if you haven't. Ah, oh, man. Even if it's hard, I'm going to say Krusty said checks in the mail, but just because of the connection to E3. Yeah. Yeah. I like I was gonna go for German twist or um You will be charted. <laughs> I'm, yeah. This is gonna be all over. I like I'm sure. Yeah. I say can, crusty can go, or charted. Okay. Can you go over them one more time, Cole? Okay. Emetic edition, momentary sling blade, big mouth bayou billy, German twist, crusty said checks in the mail, okay will, or you will be charted. And uh, the things that have with... two votes. Go ahead. I'm going to go with Momentary Sling Blade because I really like that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, 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 As so, usual, it is a mystery to us until release. Until release, I <laughs> suppose. Just concatenate them all. <laughs> yeah, just make it one long thing. <laughs> well, oh, what, what, what was it, what was it you were going to say, Dennis, about what had two votes? So, well, Krusty said checks in the mail. And then what was the other one that had two votes? You'll be charted. You will be charged. Yeah, so those two. Oh man. Okay. So I between need... those two, I don't have a preference. Neither do I. Well, Me neither. Uh, well, <laughs> let's. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll just see what strikes us. But that is that that is where <laughs> that, that that is where we fall. I'm going to put a star. Like, well, no, I'm, I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down on the other side. I was going to say for all we reference Krusty uh, and that whole thing. I feel like he 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 deserves a spot in our title. Okay. A title some. Where? <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. We we've we've used him so much. That's his royalty. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what he gets. There we go. <laughs> okay, yeah. So let's let, let's make it crusty. Um, uh -huh. yeah, because because I like a little bit when I can when I can tell what we talked about in an episode by the title. So that that that'll remind mm -hmm. me that it was an E three episode. <laughs> <Crusty's> <laughs> <a crusty laughs>